another story from the jungle, this one being the one that still gives me nightmares on occasion. Now, I cannot really claim this as happening exactly as I remembered it, not in any honest sense. I remember it as happening like so, however, which still has me waking on occasion in a cold sweat. This is back in some weird little island in the Philippines, learning jungle survival stuff from the Negritos. My friend Tony and I were getting the hang of some of the finer points of staying alive in a world that wanted you dead and festering with larvae. Tony is a solid guy, the kind of friend you're lucky to have. He had my back, I had his, and it didn't matter what stupid shit the other decided to get himself into, he wasn't going into it alone. Seriously, the guy was loyal to a fault. Still is. This is actually how we ended up in the middle of the bush together, god knows how many miles from whatever could be considered civilization, and light years away from anything remotely safe. Part of the final test of what you learn out there was to go out alone for a couple of days and make your way back to the village. It was a basic practical test. Ideally, you had an agrito shadowing you not too far off, making sure you didn't get yourself graved by being an idiot. You'd never know these guys were there though, ever. They knew this territory and they knew how to work it. The jungle is dense, profoundly thick. I know you've probably heard stories about how you can walk past like an entire ruined temple in the middle of South America and never even clue in that it's there, even though you're practically on its doorstep. It's true, you step 10 feet for your buddy in the wrong direction, blink wrong, and bam, you are alone. We had both done pretty good as far as the Negritos cared. We picked up things fast and weren't shy about doing things most westerners balk at eating bugs, getting filthy, and reaching into mysterious holes to grab whatever might be lurking in there. I had no problem with this, as my dad was kind of a nutjob survivalist in my early youth, and had a thing for doing things the traditional way. Tony had no problem doing this stuff because he had balls the size of a C-130 loaded with tanks, and driving those tanks were condors with helmets. Anyways, it's time for the practicals, and although we were supposed to solo that noise, Tony and I basically said, no dice, we're going in as a pair to which the Negritos smiled and nodded and agreed that we were smart to demand such a thing. You never go out there alone. I always thought it was kind of a trick question thing anyways, sending your goofy ass out into the dense solo when all throughout the training they go on and on about how you're a dumb shit if you go out there alone. Bonus points for us, I guess, right? We get bags over our heads and led to a little riverboat. They rumble us out for a few hours and then unceremoniously dump our asses onto the beach. The Negrito tosses us a knife stares at us for a while before making this weird little gesture and buggering off on his boat. I couldn't catch the exact gesture, but it was like a gang sign, I guess. Quick, fingers all tangled up. His boat was shit. I swear, it was made out of warehouse pallets or something the like. Tony and I both figured this guy probably went up the river a bit, then bailed on his own craft and fixed to shadow us and keep an eye out. With bravado fed by the other's presence, we went into the jungle, all smiles and ego. We were good. We knew this. We were not afraid and figured this would be fun as hell and give us some future stories to tell the ladies about and hence get laid. Tony had a knack for directions and the two of us sussed our whereabouts after only a few hours. It was daytime so climbing a tree gave us a pretty decent view. Not a lot to see really, but somehow he figured on a direction we were supposed to go and we headed off. Moving through the jungle can be slow work. In the movies you have to hack your way through shit with a machete like Indiana Jones or some shit. Reality is a bit different. If you know where to step, you can avoid all the work of cutting stuff down. A long fall on logs is pretty good, uproots and the like. But don't ever put your foot alongside something like that. That's snake food. The Negritos do it at kind of a lazy jog. We were more deliberate, but still moving at a pace that was comfortable to us. We chattered constantly, it wasn't to keep predators away. As far as we knew, the island had no real big threats like cats or anything. We did it because Tony and I couldn't shut the fuck up when we were around each other. I'm sure you guys have friends like that. Those two chuckle fucks in the back of the classroom in high school always snickering and loaded with in-jokes. That was pretty much us. In the jungle, with a single knife and something to prove. The first day was pretty damn uneventful. We didn't eat and we spent almost the entire time moving. We found water in different places. Big cone-shaped leaves are good for that and they typically come with snacks of different squiggly varieties. We made camp in the branches of a big goofy ass looking tree, took light watches and slept like babies. I woke up covered in bugs the size of my fingers and Tony fell off his branch and got stuck in the crook of the tree when he woke up. Clumsy bastard. The second day started out like the first, chattering, moving, high spirits. The jungle was getting smellier and bleaker as we went. 
I think we were close to an estuary or something, because there was a briny smell. The soil went from firm with a heavy layer of dead vegetation to black brown silt and loose. Tony and I tried making some fire, took us a while, but we did the trick with the thread from his shirt and a long bendy twig to make a bow with and whatnot. We got some smoldering going, but shit out there was so wet it just made a lot of thick black smoke and never really caught. I figured if we kept some tinder dry on top of our heads or something and maybe found some good dead wood, we'd have something worth burning. As time went on, we got to talking about the old times, funny crap we had done, new ideas for pranks with which to torment our hapless buddies with, and a desire to come out of this not only successful but as badass as possible. We didn't want to be the Swiss family fucking Robinson, we wanted Rambo. I mean, seriously. How could anyone want anything but that? Imagine that crap, coming out of the bush all grim faced and scarred with like a dead deer over your shoulder, and the skulls of your enemies tied around you in a belt made of human hair. Not that we had enemies local, but I'm sure we can make some, right? That's pretty much us. It was around midday, Tony and I noticed this weird echo effect with the jungle. It was hard to notice because we never really shut up, but when we talked, there was this weird echo that was soft and sounded far away at first, until he pointed it out and we started listening more carefully. Every time we talked, there it was, that echo. It wasn't as far away as it initially sounded either, just deceptively soft. We figured it was maybe sound waves bouncing off the broadleaf plants in the area or something and coming back at us all curved up. We weren't rocket scientists, but we weren't proper dumb either. Tony and I made a game out of it. We'd start chattering at each other and then he'd hold up his hand, fingers splayed, and visually count down with him. We'd stop mid-sentence when he hit zero and could hear the last few words said bounce around us in a weird jungle whisper. At dusk, we had been getting kinda tired of the game and blew it off. But before I we went up to rest, Tony pulled it on me one last time. Normally, echoes just kinda stop or trail off, right? This time, I don't know, it just kind of looped, and it looped wrong. The last thing I'd been saying to Tony was something along the lines of, I'm a goddamn sexual tyranna, and cut off. What we heard bouncing around us in that quiet, sibilant way was, I'm a goddamned, I'm a goddamned, god, god, I'm damned. Tony and I stopped talking and just kind of stared at each other for a bit. We weren't ruling out echoes yet, though over all our time out here doing this training, we hadn't ever really heard it before, or mention of it. We were both creeped right the fuck out. And when one of us is creeped, the other picks up on it and the hackles go up. We found ourselves a solid tree and that night, we did not pull light watches, we pulled proper. I'm figuring, a little after midnight, Tony woke me up with a hand on my shoulder. It's dark at night in the jungle, goddamn dark, and noisy. The canopy overhead pretty much prevents any good starlight coming through, and the skies are almost always fat with grey clouds. The bugs get set to screeching at night, and they don't quit for nothing. Underneath our tree, something was rooting around in the bushes, even through the bugs we could both hear it, shuffling, a quiet snort. Crunches, snuffling, sounded like a pig to me, and I was set to bark at it, or maybe spook it off when Tony's hand on my shoulder tenses. Then I could hear it, muttering in between the snuffles, a snort, some bushes rustling, and a few low scattered words, bits and pieces of sentences. It took me a second, but fuck me if it didn't sound like Tony down there, pissed off and searching for something he'd lost in a bush. You know, when a grumpy ass drops a contact or something and gets to searching for it, muttering under his breath. It's like that. Whatever was down there was fucking talking. It wasn't making any sense though. The weirdest fucking thing. So tits. Snort snort. Yeah, the green... Shuffle. Named after fucker. Russell. Then a laugh. And I froze when I heard that. It started with my laugh, which is this goofy Mark Hamill as the Joker thing and ended with Tony's troublemaker's draw. See, when we had been bullshitting for the past, what, day and a half? And spent a good time laughing our asses off at each other. Whatever the fuck that thing was down there, it was like it was trying our voices on for size. We'd both seen Predator. We'd been quoting that shit for days out here. I can't even begin to count how many times I just stopped while one of the instructors was explaining something, stare up into the horizon, and mutter, there's something out there, up in them trees which never failed to make Tony laugh like a retard. Military types watch a lot of goddamn movies, and your typical boots-on-the-ground motherfuckers can quote like a champ. No lie, 
We can even do crazy shit, like quote a movie line for line with a different cast from yet another movie. You haven't lived till you've seen a bunch of petty officers do a scene from Aliens with Thurgood from Half-Baked as Sarge. We caught the similarities to our situation pretty goddamn fast. It was eerie listening to this thing matter about stupid shit down there. It had no comprehension of the noises it was making, but it was fucking making them. Tony slid me the knife and secured himself in his spot, and I kept the watch until dawn. The thing trundled off a half hour or so before daybreak. I'm no Apache, but I know knives well enough to be comforted by holding one. But even that didn't break the, oh, what the fuck have we gotten ourselves into, gloom that caught us. The next day was a grim fucking thing. We weren't chattering, we weren't joking around anymore. Nerves were on edge, and both of us had to have looked like someone gutted our favorite dog. Tony did, at least. I'm a goofy looking guy, so I probably still look like a run-of-the-mill dork. Believe me, the urge to quote Predator was pretty goddamn strong but we just couldn't get past the feeling that we needed to be quiet and careful. Tony managed a half-hearted Arnold gargle when we were up a ridge. I think an attempt to beat the gloom, but even that couldn't do it. He does a good Arnold gargle too. For those that don't know what it is, it's hard to describe really. It's like a weird accented <coughs> noise done in Arnie's manner that's pretty unmistakable when you hear it. Wow, actually writing that down makes it seem so dumb as hell. Still funny as all get out though, I think. We didn't hear that weird echo as long as we didn't talk. We were starting to get hungry though, and Random Bugs wasn't doing much to assuage that. It felt like… I don't know the right description. It felt like we were being bullied, if that made any sense. We couldn't talk, we weren't allowed to. That got us both feeling a little pissed off. Tony and I individually aren't anything I'd call cowards. We aren't heroes by any stretch of the word, but we're not pussies. Together though, we get stupid brave. I'm sure you might see where this is leading. To us, it was a natural shift. It took a few hours of grimly trudging along in the direction we believed was the right way to go for the shift to happen, but it was kind of inevitable. Screw this thing. Screw this stupid talking thing. I broke the silence proper, started bitching about how the girls on this island, how they had curves like a dirt road. Tony countered immediately that I lacked the proper gear to drive a dirt road. We started chattering again, this time aggressively. We were to find this damn spooky thing. We began the most ridiculous conversations. How do you properly screw a dolphin? Do you beach it and plug its blowhole? Do you sneak up on it in a zodiac, spear gun its ass, and go at an eye socket? Crap like that. We were uncouth savages. We were listening for that stupid echo, waiting for it. We were not disappointed. The echoes started up. It was hard to get a location, but the best I could figure was back towards my side a bit. Tony scored a major victory when he said something along the lines of, Dance around that flagpole, bare-assed and body-painted like I'm a drag queen paramount. The echo came back as, I'm a drag queen. Tony stopped in his tracks, turned around and screamed back at it. You're fucking right, you're a drag queen, you dick-eyed jungle cunt. It was liberating. Terrifying, though. That was the first time we actually addressed the goddamn thing. But we did. We addressed it. We acknowledged it as existing. And that just sat bad. A small victory, with that feeling in our guts. That wasn't the feeling you get when you win a fight. It's the feeling you get when you start a war. When Tony had called that thing out, it was a declaration of war. We both started getting hostile. Not towards each other, mind you, but towards this whatever the hell it was. We got a planning and threatening, vocalizing the horrible things we were planning on doing to it once we caught a hold of it. I distinctly remember Tony saying something along the lines of, I'm gonna strangle this goofy ass thing. I'm gonna kill it with my bare hands. I laughed. Dude, what if it's a fucking Negrito and he's just screwing with us? Tony just stared at me. I shrugged. Couldn't blame him for the sentiment, really. Thing is, we kept going on. We never turned around. Neither of us wanted to actually stand our ground or charge off after it. There was this distinct sensation that doing so would have been one hell of a bad idea. We were getting hungry though and figured that it was probably time to do something about it. There's a lot to eat in the jungle if we're not shy. Frogs, bugs, and the like can keep you going like a trail ration. But if you want something with more substance, you have to kill it. Or if you're some sort of fancy botanist, I suppose you can tell a jungle death turnip from a potato and do it that way. We were not botanists, and I only knew which plants could get me high, unconscious, or stop bleeding. Tony climbed up a tree and managed to brain some sort of monkey critter with a rock. A guy could be quiet as hell, and the monkey critters out here were curious and stupid. 
The specific trap we used to catch the monkeys off guard was me laying down in a space between some trees and doing my best curly impression from the Three Stooges. You know, this thing where you lay on your side, start running, and kind of turn circles while I'm going. Well, that's what I was doing, which got a few monkeys coming down and looking at us like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? And Tony hit one with a rock. We were some crafty bitches. I managed to start an acceptable fire. Previously, I had taken our tinder and folded it up in a dry leaf and wore it on my head like an idiot. The campfire was tiny, but it did the trick. I cleaned up the monkey critter as best I could, and we cooked it, old school, on some sticks. The sticks caught fire frequently, and a lot of the meat burned to an inedible carbon, but my god was it good. We cooked the hell out of that monkey. I'm sure it was loaded with parasites, but burning the hell out of it had to help, and I figured we'd get purged when we got back to our unit, or hell, just the village if I could boil some water and drop some tabs. The other monkey critters watched us eat. They were quiet, just staring. Probably should have felt bad about that in hindsight, but neither of us was feeling charitable or friendly really. Something about having meat in our bellies and an actual fire, albeit a small one, made us feel a lot more ready for this weird shit and we got a planning on how we were going to handle it. Idea 1 was to continue on as we were going and just pick up the pace. It was the safest idea by far and Tony figured we had another day until we got to either a shitty road where we could navigate off of, or a larger river we could follow. Idea 2 was to cover ourselves in mud arm ourselves with bows made from roots and shit, and ambush the thing. I shit you not. We figured why the hell not. Idea 3 was to split apart at night, have each person in a different tree, and stay up until whatever it was came snooting around. Whoever was in the tree it decided to investigate would signal the other one, who would come down and murder the hell out of it from the rear. I liked idea 3 and voted for it. Tony voted for 2, and the monkey's skull sided with me, making it a unanimous vote for idea 3 because Tony was Italian and Italians don't get to vote. There was some threatening of each other's life, but in the end we pretty much settled on our two tree ambush idea. We didn't move from that site that day. We sharpened some sticks. Thick, short ones make good spikes. Tony let me keep the knife since I was a bit swifter with it than he was, and he carried the spikes. The guy is strong much stronger than me, and I figured he could probably put those things to much better use than I could if he could get a good lineup. I figured it would go like this. It would start bothering one or the other of us who would throw a twig at his buddy. Buddy would come down and engage whatever it was, at which point the initial target would drop down and help secure the kill. We went over it a couple of different times, figured out some possible oh shit secondary plans, but really there wasn't much to it. This thing had been creeping us out for a while and we wanted it dead. We felt kind of elated by the thought of killing it. Turn the tables on its ass and come out like badasses. We got ourselves motivated, and I did something which is, I guess, kind of embarrassing, but whatever. I put on war paint. I guess that's dorky as hell. I took some of the black silt soil we had been around, mixed it with monkey juice, and smeared three dark lines across my face. Tony thought I looked kind of badass, so he did the same. We used to do this thing during training and paintball games. Hell, once during a hide-and-go-seek game with some Corman girls at Camp Lester, we did it. Yes, we played hide-and-go-seek with the legitimate intent of getting laid by said core girls. Yes, we smeared our face paint on the aforementioned core girls. He did a full-on handprint on his face. It looked very Conan meets Geronimo meets a Guido. The paint tied up into pretty solid noticeable lines when the fluids coagulated, which took all of 15 minutes or so. Our sight was decent too. An opening in the canopy over where we had set our campfire promised that if there was any light to be had that night, we'd be able to make some use of it. We picked out our trees, climbed up there, and took a few practice throws with twigs we had nearby. I hit him in the eye. He kept aiming for my balls. Spirits were high. Sort of. It was a false high. Bravado, I think. Night came, and with it, bug song. High chirps and cackling buzzes all over the place. I near pissed myself when what I had assumed to be a knot of wood next to my thigh twitched and started the staccato screech that ricocheted off trees. It was a big ass beetle thing. We looked out, and that cloud cover was lighter than it typically is, and we had a good moon. Not bright by any stretch, but more than we had any night previous. We waited. Felt like forever, sitting up in a tree, trying to keep your heartbeat regular, knowing the second we heard whatever it was we heard, we'd get that adrenaline kick to the nuts, and that would make our whole body start shaking. I'm not sure how long we waited up there before it came. At first I missed it entirely. I was so intent on listening for it I missed it entirely. When I finally zeroed in on the snuffling, rummaging, muttering beneath me, I realized I had been hearing it for some time now. It was under me. Me. I pulled my knife up and crouched on my branch, 
my free hand, making sure for the love of God, I had a stronghold on a nearby branch. I took a few minutes to steady myself and really listen. I wanted to make sure of a few things before I alerted Tony. I desperately wanted this thing to be alone, and I wanted to get a general idea of its size. Size wasn't too hard. Judging by the heaviness of the rummaging going on beneath me, it was man-sized. Maybe a bit bigger, but lower to the ground. As for the numbers, well fuck. I only heard one. Small comfort that. I had a pile of little pre-snapped twigs, and I grabbed the whole damn thing and tossed it towards Tony's trees. Now, remember, I said Tony can be a quiet guy. I had no idea if I had hit him, or if he had started moving. I could only really guess as to the actions over on his end. I got a good grip on the branch with my legs, and made a swing under it. Do kind of a Spider-Man maneuver, and maybe stab downwards. It was a bit over elaborate, yes. But I used to climb trees all the time as a kid, and dangling like a douchebag was second nature. Nowadays, the dangling, not so much. Douchebag, I still got. Anyways, I'm dangling. I'll let go with my hands and get ready to knife this fucking thing in the head when I see it. A huge moment of confusion washed over me when it happened. I damn near went loose and fell off my branch. Tony is looking straight up at me. He's gotta be like four feet off the ground just looking at me with this blank retarded look on his face. Mind you, it's pretty dark, but I can see a face. I swear it looked like him at first. Then I focus on it a bit more and notice it has no fucking face paint. It's not Tony. Shit, it doesn't even look like Tony's face anymore, it's just a face. But it's a goddamn human face, looking up at me, blinking. My blood runs cold, and I can feel my body come to a screeching halt. Tony, get the fuck back up in your tree, I say. Up in your tree. It says back, sounding pleased with its goddamn self. I can hear Tony, the real Tony over there, in his tree rustle as he gets right the hell back up in his branches. What the hell is going on? What the hell? What the hell is that? He's got this angry nervousness in his voice. I've heard him like this only a few times, usually before we got our collective asses kicked by some angry merchant marines. The thing is still staring at me, and I'm making out more of its body. It's a fucking pig. I mean, its body. It's got the broad rectangular barrel of a body. It's quadruped, though I can't make out the distinct feet. It's got a human, or at least a humanish face. It's a pig, Tony. It's just a goddamn pig, I say, and the thing is mimicking me, just the same as always. I can hear an exasperated sigh in the other tree, and I continue. It's got a people face, though. Stay the fuck up in that tree, Doc. Doc is a magic word to Corman. It's a business word, and it isn't lightly used. Marines call us Doc, but usually only after we've proven ourselves, I guess you could say. Corman rarely refer to each other as such, unless we were trying to elaborate on a point. I was elaborating my point as hard as I could, as calmly as I could without shitting myself. I was still upside down. If I had to shit myself, well, think about how unpleasant it would be to fill your pants, and then have it run up your goddamn back and into your hair. Blah. Manface is looking up at me, and Tony goes silent over there. We stare at each other for a long while before I manage to find purchase and so back upright. I'm not looking down anymore. Let the thing root around. I didn't sleep that night. It left before morning, like it always did, and Tony and I went to the ground and moved out as fast as possible. We talked little, only that what I had seen was an unquantifiable thing. I could not predict any action's outcome on something I knew absolutely nothing about. I mean shit. If it had been like a tiger or something ridiculous like that, I could have figured something out. Even something stupid, but not this thing. If it had been the Negrito, well, Tony and I would have likely kicked the hell out of him, but I would have chilled Tony out before he killed him, no problem. It wasn't anything I knew though. It was wrong, and bizarre and very disturbing. We immediately initiated idea one. We didn't hunt any more monkeys. We didn't fish. We didn't eat bugs. We drank sparingly as we went, which gave us some serious dehydration issues. Tony had an idea of where to go, and that's where we went. Fast. Thank God for the river. When we found we had made so many miles, we weren't playing around anymore either. The first civilian craft we saw, which was this shitty little rickshaw thing, we flagged it, asked for a lift, and we got back home. When we arrived at the village, we were haggard, dehydrated, cut up, and miserable. This wasn't a big surprise to the Negritos. Everybody came back from the practical like that. 
What bothered them is that the man they sent out to watch over us never came back. That keeps me up some nights.